Ziming Zhongra is a very special type of clock. Um, that name was given to them by the emperors of China. Um, it meant self-ringing bells. Europeans at the time knew them as sing songs, and that was um, very much because they were not only timekeepers, um, but they played music, um, hence the name. They also had moving parts often, automata if you like, and the ones made in China had symbolism as well. Clockwork with an escapement um, for timekeeping was invented in China in 1088 by Su Sung with his great water wheel. Um, but that, sadly, that technology and knowledge seems to have been lost over time. So when the Zimingjong arrived, they were seemed to be new to Chinese people. The British were very keen to trade with China at the time, but the Chinese didn't necessarily need anything from Britain in that period. Um, but the emperors were really interested in clockwork and Zimingjong, and so that's what really stimulated the trade. The mechanics of the timepieces seemed new, but very quickly Chinese craftsmen learned how to make them themselves. So in some cases you get Zimingjong that have both British and Chinese parts. In the Forbidden City, the Emperor um, created workshops there where he employed both European and Chinese craftsmen. And there they were able to work together and then create clocks that had symbolism that was really meaningful. I really love the lotus flower clock because that has a music mechanism that was made in Europe, but the other parts of the mechanism were made in China and they've been brought together. And then some beautiful lotus flower leaves, three of which open to reveal figures inside, uh, some of which are holding peaches, which are symbolic of longevity. The emperors were very interested in timekeeping, but um, they were also interested in using clockwork along with mathematical instruments to time duration of eclipses and things like that um, as part of their view that the emperor united heaven and earth. So it's very much part of that sort of worldview at the time. It's all about a meeting of culture, technology and craftsmanship at a very special time in British and Chinese history. It's an ongoing process of research and understanding.